There's supposed to be unity in the house of Christ, right? In the community of Christ, there's supposed to be unity. How great it is when brothers and sisters in faith are in unity. The only way that's really achieved in the churches today is by singing, right? That's why there's so much singing. We all can do this thing, do it together. But when it comes to, for example, understanding scripture, of actually having the Holy Spirit present there and leading the congregation, we get into all kinds of troubles, right? That's why there's so many schisms and denominations and there's so many spiritual leaders who don't agree with each other. If you look at anything in scripture, look at the interpretation, there's going to be hundreds and some of them are going to be conflicting. So there is no real unity. There is an absence of the Holy Spirit in these places that are known for the scandals and things like this. This seems like obvious, right? You cannot sidestep this in any way and become wiser in your own eyes. This is reality. The Holy Spirit, this unity between brothers and sisters, doesn't really exist outside some superficial expression of faith. You have to accept that. You have to acknowledge it and understand that that is one of the signs of the times. A real sign of the times, not some kind of a mathematical equation, some guy who doesn't understand what scripture is about came up with because the math works out between meaningless variables this is a real sign of the times this is the mortal wound on the head of the beast It must have been amazing for the apostles and the students of Christ to go around singing the song of the gospel, teaching people who had never heard it what it's all about, that your sins are forgiven if you believe in him, if you believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead. You will be set free from the burden of the law, from your, from your own lacking. That's probably not the correct way to express it. But that's what they did. And they had the same spirit. They knew Christ. They were able to speak because of their faith. That's not what's happening in the churches today, is it? They're speaking because they think they have it figured out or something. Like, and I'm still learning also. I don't know everything. Like, I recently just learned what it means, really, to act in the name of Christ. Like, what does it mean to act in the name of the Son of God, the Messiah? It's about the name. God is salvation. That's what the name means. That means when I do something, I should do it because God is salvation. So I can aim for something that is willed by God, and even though I don't have the power to reach that point, like Moses when he didn't reach the promised land, he did it because God is salvation. I hope that's why I make these videos. I hope people realize that there's so much wealth in the word of God that is made ignorant and dark by the people who don't actually believe. And here is a sign of their unbelief. You know how they like to put the Messiah on the cross. And if, if you look at his face, he's always sad. He's always defeated. He's miserable. He's suffering. He's in agony. He's in despair. Those don't belong in the world when the second coming happens. Because that is the feast. That is the celebration when he comes here with his family, with his holy people who are his brothers and sisters, and they have this happy unity that was missing from the world. Those pictures of him being sad and miserable and suffering, he doesn't want to look at them. He's going to set that thing in fire. And not all of it is bad. Like, that's okay. He's supposed to be at the right side of the father, but I guess that's better.